that's how you train a 20 billion parameter model with 40 gigabyte size on consumer GPU with 15 gigabytes of RAM in under three minutes. So they're claiming their models can beat chat GPT. But more importantly, if their claims hold true, you will not only be able to run a model like this on an iPhone 12, but actually fine tune it, which is crazy. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this new paper called QLoRa, Efficient Fine Tuning of Quantized LLMs. So this paper makes some really bold claims. We will look at the output from these models. I will also show you that using their approach, how you can fine tune an LLM on your own data set without the need for a really powerful GPU. So this is going to be a very interesting video. First, let's understand the significance of this work. Most of the models that you see today, they're fine-tuned using 16-bit precision, which requires a lot of RAM in order to fine-tune them. Now, when it comes to inference, so a lot of people take these fine-tuned models and quantize them into four bits. So basically, you're taking an already fine-tuned model in 16 bits and then compressing it down to four bits. Although you will be able to run this on a consumer GPU, but the performance is not going to be that great. However, this paper introduces a special four bit normal float data type that is efficient at being precise, which means that this technique enables you to fine tune models without losing performance. This process enables you to fine tune a 33 billion parameter model using a single 24 gigabytes GPU or a 65 billion parameter model on a 46 gigabytes GPU. Just to understand how significant this is, if you were to fine tune a model using 16 bits, so you will need 780 gigabytes of RAM. In comparison, now you need just 48 gigabytes of RAM. And that is why in most of the papers, you see that they're using multiple A100 GPUs. But with this technique, you will be able to fine tune models on commercial GPUs. I hope uh, this gives you a context of why this paper is so important and why everybody is so excited about it. So for the rest of the video, we will quickly glance through the paper itself and look at some of the results and comparisons they have done. And later in the video, I will show you how you can fine tune a large language model using their approach on your data set. So they have provided a family of different size models, which they are calling Guanaco. Uh, I'm not sure what's with the animal names and large language models, but according to their results, uh, it's able to outperform almost all of the open source uh, models out there. And it reaches around 99.3% of the performance level of chat GPT while requiring only 24 hours of fine tuning on a single GPU. Now, this was done on a single benchmark dataset. So these results may not hold true in the world, but I think that's not the significance of this paper. In this paper, they are making three different contributions. First, they are introducing a new 4-bit uh, data type, which we already looked at. The second is they quantize the quantization constant. So think about it. They're compressing the compression algorithm and they have optimized the memory load required for loading these models. And one thing that they highlight is that a small high quality data set can actually produce state of the art results. And this is something that I think the research community has realized recently that you don't need huge models, but you really need to focus on the quality of the training data. So they have introduced uh, multiple models ranging from 7 billion parameters to 65 billion parameters. All of them are trained on open assistant data set, so which is relatively small data set. So one of the most important results uh, in this paper is this table seven. So here they compare the responses generated by different models relative to each other on two different data sets. One is the Wakunia benchmark data set and the other one is open assistant data set. In this case, uh, there were two different techniques that they employed in order to evaluate uh, the performance. So they use something called ELA score, but in the first case, human raters evaluated uh, different responses from the same prompt by different models and ranked them in terms of their preference. 
and the second case uh, GPT-4 was used uh, to do the same and they're comparing outputs from eight different models including that from GPT-4 and then there's the Guanaco 16 billion parameter model uh, BARD and uh, the ChatGPT. Now before looking at the comparison of Guanaco models with the other ones one very interesting thing that I noticed was that GPT-4 model seems to like its own responses a lot which is understandable but the most interesting thing is that even though ChatGPT uh, is supposed to generate very similar responses to GPT-4 uh, but on average GPT-4 doesn't seem to like responses from ChatGPT especially on this Wakunia benchmark so in this case based on the ranking ChatGPT is third uh, Guanaco 16B is second on the rank but what's surprising to me is that even humans seems to do not like ChatGPT's responses compared to the other models which is very interesting however keep in mind that this, these are the results on a single data set uh, it may not hold true in the wild okay so before looking at uh, output from the model as well as how to fine tune it let's look at some of the broader impacts this model can have so using the techniques you will be able to fine-tune a 33 billion parameter model on a single consumer GPU such as uh, uh, 3090 and for uh, 65 billion parameter you probably need a single professional GPU but still not uh, a100 and to fine-tune the 65 billion parameter model you just need a single professional GPU rather than eight of them as they note here, even though their models were trained on a very small data set compared to ChatGPT, it still rivals it on a benchmark data set. But the most significant part of this work is that using this approach, a small team with small resources can now fine tune their own models for their specific tasks. And one specific example which they talk about is that not only you will be able to get predictions from these models, specifically the 7 billion parameter model in an iPhone 12 but you can actually fine-tune the model on an iPhone 12 while it's charging at night so now everybody can train and fine-tune their own personalized uh, LLM on their phones now some of the limitations although they claim that you can get a very similar performance uh, to 16-bit but it's not going to be the same level because uh, fine-tuning a full model on 16 with 16 bit is going to be pretty uh, resource and uh, resource and cost intensive task so they did not really explore that and another thing that they highlight in their own uh, work which is I think very important to do that uh, they say it appears the performance of these benchmarks likely depend on how similar the fine-tuning data set is to the benchmark data set which is expected and it's, it's a reasonable issue to have and that is why uh, I think uh, like we shouldn't be really paying too much attention when they claim that it's almost 99% of the performance of uh, ChatGPT because this is specifically on this single uh, training data set and it is very important to highlight that part okay uh, let's look at how you can uh, run this or play around with it so they have provided a uh, playground on Hugging Face but more importantly, later on in the video, I will show you how you can fine tune an LLM on your own data set. Okay, um, so here's the demo that they are currently running. It is a 33 billion parameter model. So it's one of the uh, Guanaco model. Okay, so let's look at just a couple of examples. I will be doing a more a comprehensive comparison of this with ChatGPT in a later video. But here I just wanted to see what's the speed of generation and everything so um, it's an example prompt that they have provided a llama entered in my garden what should i do so let's see that's actually the response is pretty fast so they said if you are unfamiliar with llamas or have never interacted with one before it is best to proceed with caution the llama can be quite territorial and protective of their spaces so approaching them too quickly may cause them to become aggressive right uh, and it, the response looks pretty good now, a couple of other tests uh, asked to try to uh, lead to the Congress in favor of moving to parliamentary form of government rather than presidential form of government. And it does make some uh, good arguments in the favor of uh, parliamentary form of government. So it's pretty nice to see that. Uh, again, uh, next I asked it to generate three startup ideas in the enterprise uh, B2B SaaS, right? 
and it came up with uh, three pretty helpful ideas. These are not bad at all. Okay, next I asked it a programming uh, question. So I said write a Python function to write a file into an S3 bucket using Boto library, right? And it came up with the code, which is pretty nice. It's a general code. Then what I did was I actually replaced this reading with writing, right? But what I did here is I said uh, this Python function is supposed to write a file into an S3 bucket, right? And I intentionally introduced an error. And then I said, there's an error in the code. Can you highlight it? And it's actually able to do that. For example, your open function has an incorrect parameters. To open a file uh, in the text format, pass rt to mode. And uh, to open a file in the binary format, pass rb to the mode. But I was passing wb in the incorrect uh, code. So this is actually really impressive that it can uh, figure out what was the problem. I would say I'm actually impressed when it comes to its coding ability. Okay, uh, one more programming test. So I asked it to write an HTML code for a website that has a single button. When the button is pressed, it randomly uh, shows one joke from a list of 10 jokes. And uh, it will also have to change the color. Now, uh, it wasn't able to complete this code uh, because I think uh, it exceeded the token radio. So what I did was I repeated the same prompt, but this time I said three jokes, right? And here is the code that it came up with. Now let's copy this. I'm going to go here, paste it here, and let's see if it actually works. This is going to be impressive if it does work. Oh, uh, there is a button, although probably I should have asked it to make it bigger, but let's see. Uh, it changed the color and it also showed one of the jokes. And oh, wow. Okay, it works. And this is crazy because imagine, um, you can potentially run this on your uh, phone or on a local machine. And this is really impressive for me, especially for a programmer. In most of the other open source large language models that I have tested, I think only Visit Wukunya was able to do this task. So I am impressed, but we're going to do a more thorough comparison between this and other models uh, in a subsequent video. Okay, okay. Uh, now, um, so we looked at the capabilities of the model. Uh, but let's see how efficient this is. So they have provided two different Google uh, Colab notebooks. One of them is to show how to use a 4-bit model in inference with all their variants. And this is the model, which is a 20 billion parameter model. So usually you are able to run a 7 billion parameter model with 4-bit quantization on a pre-Google Colab instance. But they are able to run a 20 billion parameter model, which is impressive. And the second notebook shows how you can fine tune a model using a uh, four bit quantization that they have pro proposed. So we're going to look at an example of how to quantize at the same uh, 20 billion parameter model on our data set using uh, just a Google Colab. So Google Colab has a T4 uh, GPU, which is decent, but not great. Okay, so let's first look at their inference uh, notebook. Now, in this notebook, they're using this uh, bits and bytes uh, package, which integrates uh, the approaches presented in their QLORA paper. Now, in the first section, they are showing how you can load any model in 4-bit, and this is going to work for any uh, model that supports device map. So here is a basic example. If you want to load a 30 million OPT model, right? Uh, so you can do that using the auto model for a causal LM. Uh, and similar to uh, when you load a model in 8 bits, you can now pass on uh, load in 4 bit equal to true. And this will load the model in 4 bit. And once loaded, you can get the predictions in exactly the same way. You would do it using the uh, transformer library. I would recommend everybody to go over the rest of the sections in this um, Google Colab. But the thing that I want to look at is this one, pushing the limits of Google Colab. So in this case, they're actually loading a 20 billion parameter model. Uh, so this is a GPT and UX from Luther AI. So again, they're using the bits and bytes package and loading the model in 4-bit. But now the quantization type is the new float uh, type that they have introduced in their paper. Now, uh, the rest of the process is exactly the same that you would perform um, in transformer package. You can actually get predictions 
using this uh, 20 billion parameter model, which is crazy because uh, this T5, T4 GPU that Google provides, it has only 15 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, next we will look at this second notebook, which shows you how you can uh, fine tune a model based on your own data set. Um, and I would actually encourage everybody uh, to experiment with this. Uh, the data set that they are going to be using in this example is this uh, English Quotes data set, which is available on Hugging Face. So it contains uh, a JSON file in the following format. So it has uh, a key for author, then a given English quote, and then some tags associated with the quote. So while the Google Colab is running, let me walk you through the code. So first, uh, we install uh, all the required packages. So this includes the bits and bytes, the transformer, and the perf, that's the, the uh, algorithm used for uh, training, accelerate, and then the data set package. Next, uh, here they are configuring a uh, base model. So again, uh, this notebook uses the 20 billion parameter model up from Luther AI called GPT New X 20B. And this is a pretty huge model. Uh, the size and half precision is around 40 gigabytes. But the T4 GPU that we are going to be using in this, it has a, a memory of only uh, 15 gigabytes. So again, well, in the configuration, we set it, it to be in the 4-bit and we select the special 4-bit um, uh, data type that is presented in the QLORA paper. So this is the normal setup that you need to provide. Next, we will have a tokenizer that is coming from the transformer library. And the tokenizer is going to be based on the uh, model that we have selected. And you simply set up the model the way would, you would do it using the auto model for causal inference. While this is downloading, let's look at the next part. So once the download is complete, next we are just setting up and some configurations for training the model. Now, since we're going to be uh, using LoRa for training. So it's only using 0.01% uh, parameters for training. So a small fraction of them are going to be trained and those are part of the LoRa adopters. Next, uh, we need to set up our training data set. So in this case, um, they're using the English quotes data set that I just showed you. So here's the format again. So quotes, then the authors and uh, the corresponding tags. And we just want to look at uh, the process data set. So in this case, what they did was they tokenized just the codes, right? So now you're going to have uh, a couple of other fields. So one is the input IDs, and this is based on the tokenization process, and then attention mask uh, as well, uh, added by, these are the things that are added by the tokenization process. Okay, one more thing. Uh, there are just uh, 2,500 examples in this small data set. So it's not a large data set, but it, it, just to show you, you can actually uh, fine tune your model. Next is the uh, training or fine tuning part. So uh, they're setting the maximum number of steps to 10. If you're doing it on a large data set, you definitely want to keep it much higher. But essentially using the transformer package, we are going to be uh, retraining the model. So we pass on the model, the corresponding data set that we just created and uh, some other training training parameters. For example, here is the learning rate, then uh, flow to part precision that we want to use is 16 bit, right? And some other things. So let's run this and see how long the training process is going to take. Okay, so the training process is complete. So that's how you train a 20 billion parameter model with 40 gigabyte size on a consumer GPU with 15 gigabytes of RAM in under three minutes. Now we'll definitely have to train it for a lot longer for the training last to start decreasing, but this is just the process of yeah, how you can fine tune a model using this new QLORA approach. Okay, so you're able to train the model, but how do you get predictions from it? So it's an auto regressive text completion model. So we pass on our text, right? Then pass it on to a, a tokenizer. Right, and then uh, pass the input, which is tokenized version of our input, into the model and call the generate function on it, right? And then we simply decode it. So here uh, was my uh, prompt. Hello, my name is, 
and here's the response that came up with so hello my name is john and i'm a programmer i'm a pro because i like to write code you can also integrate this as a, a pipeline uh, from the transform package if you want to get predictions it's uh, just fascinating to see the progress um, that has been made by the open source community in the last few months especially since february when the llama were so released uh, uh, so i can't wait to see what's going to happen in the next couple of months uh, just quoting the words of a wise man, what a time to be alive. If you liked the video and found this useful, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't and uh, push that bell notification button to get notifications for each and every new video. If you were working on a custom large language model or uh, information retrieval models and you need help, you can actually consult me. So there is going to be a calendar link in the description of the video. We also have a growing Discord community so I join the Discord um, if you are interested. I do have some good plans for the community over there yeah, in the coming few weeks. Um, and if would, you would like to support the work that I'm doing, uh, check out my Patreon. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.